Hey everyone, I'm Scott Davenport, and this is the first video in a series that will help you get up and running fast with On One Photo Raw. So uh, we're going to go through a bunch of the different modules in more detail, as well as some processing of photos later in this series of videos. But the first one, we're going to start with the Browse module. This is kind of where you will begin with Photo Raw. A quick tour of the interface. On the left-hand side, we have areas to have your folders, which house all of your photos. You can have things in the cloud. We have albums, which are curated collections, and we can also filter the photos we have in our view. Of course, we have a big area to see our photos. And on the right-hand side, we have some other information about the photos, the metadata, who took the photo, when, what types of keywords have you added, all these things that you can add to your images in Photo Raw. At the very bottom, we have a toolbar, like a bunch of different controls. And I want to point out a couple of things. First, these little icons on either corner here and here, those collapse and expand the individual panels there. So you can have more space. If you don't need to see metadata, you want to see it, you click on these things. And also the tab key, I press that once, and both panels go away and both return. So it's a nice quick way to get a big view of your photo. One last thing on this bottom bar is this raw previews. There's accurate versus fast. Now I'll tend to keep it at accurate, but there's a little bit of a time cost because you know Anwan's going to have to look at the entire raw photo and generate that preview. If you really want to get a real quick view of things coming from your uh, camera, or you just put a bunch of photos on your computer, want to see them fast, change that to fast. And what fast will do is it will read the embedded JPEG that is in a raw file and just show you that. So you get a very quick look at it. It won't be as fine detailed as your larger raw megapixel gigantic photo, but you get a good idea. Is this a photo I want to work on? Something I want to keep? Something I want to save for later? Let's take a quick peek at the left-hand side again here. So we have two different really areas in this folders here. We got catalog folders and we have our local drives and cloud storage. Catalog folders are like your favorites, where you have your uh, most precious images, or maybe you have your entire you know, photo library there. And what On One will do is in the background, it will make sure that those photos are cached. They have a little bit of a larger preview. And so you get to see things faster. And you know, it's just quick access to get to them. So just clicking on any of these here, I can quickly see all the different photos that are in there. Now, my local drives are exactly what you think they are. Those are all the things connected to your computer. And this includes the memory card reader you have, or if you have a card slot in your computer or laptop. This one right here, this untitled, that is a memory card that is in my camera, or you know, from my camera rather. And so you go into one of these areas and all the different shoots that I have on this camera. I can take any one of these, I can drag them over into my local drives to copy them to my computer. I can do all that from right here within Browse. I don't have to do it outside of Browse, of course you can if you like to, but that stuff is built into the program. Farther down, we have albums. And so albums are either curated collections, like things you have put together for yourself, like this set of photos here. When I was working on a video course, I put all of these into this particular album so I could have ready access to them whenever I need them. There's also this concept called a smart album, and that lets you create albums based on metadata, what the tags are, do you have certain time ranges you're interested in, all of that kind of stuff is available to create these smart albums. Now smart albums only work with cataloged folders. You have to have your set of favorites defined, then you can create your smart album. And finally, we also have filters. So if I were to choose this set here and I say filter, I want to turn this on and show me only the four star photos. We can see things have changed. And now I'm only seeing, you know, the, the, the photos I have rated with four stars. And there are a whole variety of different things you can filter on time, color, star ratings. You can also do things in here with aperture, author, camera types. There's a whole host of metadata that you can sort on. Now, speaking of metadata, when you select a photo in your view, on the right hand side, you get the metadata for it. The info tab has all of the crucial information, what camera took it, your lens settings, all of the ISO, the, you know, the shutter speed, the, the aperture, all sorts of information in there. You also have the full EXIF data as well as IPTC data for setting anything that you want to for contact information or your copyright information. All that stuff is available in 
the browse module. Now, so far, all we've been looking at is the grid view. Well, we have other views. We have a full photo view where I just see the large preview. And this is where I'll often use the tab key so I can see just my photo nice and large without the distractions of the sidebars. We have the film strip mode so you can scrub left to right looking for your photos and pick any one of them and see the larger view here. And of course, grid, which we were familiar with from the beginning. There's one other view I want to show you that is called the preview or com I'm sorry, the preview compare mode. I can select two images and I'm using the command or control key to select multiple images. And now I can see both images side by side. I can press that tab key, see things here. And this option lock, pan, and zoom, that means I can zoom in to a particular area. And as I move around, I get to see both photos side by side in the same area. So this is really handy if you are comparing several photos of the same type, like a portrait shoot or a wedding, or in my case, a seascape. Where do I like the water on this particular rock? And I'll work with that photo as opposed to another one. Browse is also home to HDR merging and panoramic mergers. So in the Browse module, I'll select these three HDR brackets. On the right-hand side, I've got an HDR button. I click that and I get a preview of my merged image. I can choose which one is my reference image as I've got to turn on ghosting. And I can do some basic adjustments right here in this panel without having to uh, go anywhere else. So I can get an idea of, you know, what will my my HDR look like based on the sliders and things I set here. And then if I sit save, we'll go off and generate that HDR photo for me and I can do further edits later on. And we can also do panoramic merges from browse as well. We can select a series of photos. I'm using shift click to select all those photos. Hit the pano button on the right hand side. We get a preview generated. And here I can check to see what do I want to do with my crop. Do I want to leave the edges that are usually there from a, a merge? We can do a crop. We can warp it to fill. It all depends on your image. For this one, I like crop. And if you want to send this to a platform that has um, panoramic awareness, so you can add the panoramic metadata. So like a, a site like Facebook, you can pan around the panorama in the Facebook platform by adding in this panoramic data. Go ahead and save, and it will go out and generate your merged panorama. If you want to try out a style for your photo, you don't even need to leave browse. You don't have to go into the other modules. The presets panel, we have a whole bunch of different presets that come with the software. And you can choose any one of these and apply one immediately to your photo right here in browse without having to jump into develop or jump into effects. We can also create versions of a photo. Now, a version is like a virtual copy where I have a second version of the photo. Notice this little V1 here, and I can apply a different treatment to it. I haven't made a copy of my raw photo. It's very lightweight in terms of your disk space. You're not copying multiple photos. You can try out different looks using versions without ever having to leave browse. Those are the basics of the browse module. It's your place that you can view your photos, tag them, organize them, and apply some basic treatments as well. If you want to go deeper and start to craft your signature looks for your photos, you're going to want to visit the develop and effects modules. So we'll have a look at those next.